So please welcome Geraldine Orozco to the show. Welcome, Geraldine. Hi, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a gift to be here. Oh, you. It's a gift. It, it is such a gift. You know, Janet Namaste is a dear friend of mine through this podcast she'd listened to and then we connected and we were talking about people that she's drawn to and she's mentioned you I said oh so so I start going on my <laughs> Geraldine d- uh, deep dive or what I call a rabbit hole and I'm thinking oh my gosh where have you been but I realize now after even going deeper into your your story and your experience and really what you're here for your soul's purpose is I don't think I would have been ready to, I'm ready now for your information. <laughs> you know, like when the teacher, when the, when the teacher will appear when the student is ready yeah. is kind of my feeling, but you know, you're so, your story is going to, uh, my listeners are ready too, but um, you're, I really want you to go back if we could start um, so people can understand, because I feel like this is um, part one of maybe five <laughs> because there's so much, but I really, really, really want you to go into, I want to start when you're five and then 16 and then October 15th, 2013. <laughs> and I'm thinking today's the 13th of October. And then it's like, oh, I, I had to check again. I go, oh shoot. That would have been amazing if it was the same date, right? It is the same date, October 13th. Oh, it's the 13th, not the 15th. Exactly. No, 13th, oh. exactly the same date. It was on a Friday as well. So oh I believe gosh. this is the 11th year anniversary or 12, I'm not sure, 11th or one of those, yeah. So it would be, well, isn't it 2013? Right, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so 10. 10. 10, 10 year anniversary, right. yeah. Oh my gosh, go. so it's magic, right there is magic. Yeah. <laughs> I get to be with you on your 10 year anniversary of that experience. Yes. So let's go. You talk, you bring us to where you um, kind of began your journey. I, I really feel like down at when you were five or where yeah. else, where else can you start? Absolutely. Well, we can go back. I think it's good to go back just to understand for those of you that are experiencers and that might resonate with these experiences because the development of my understanding of interdimensional contact, you know, it kind of went through this progression through these life experiences. So I'll begin at the age of five with a a tremendous white light entering into the room of my parents. Um, I was just playing on the carpet. There's a, ma- a big mirror, uh, those mirror sliding uh, closet doors. Mm-hmm. Um, and looking outside over the balcony, this bright light comes up over the pool. Now keep in mind that this is a one of those, um, it's an apartment complex that has a pool at the center and it's surrounded by apartments. So mm-hmm. there's not really any natural source of light or any other uh, you know, origin that could be because it's just a swimming pool in the middle. And so if you can imagine a white light appearing from there, it was something extraordinary, not something that was regular there. And the light uh, shines bright and begins to expand as it comes towards me. Um, and the next thing I know, I'm just drawn to this light. I drop my toys and I walk towards the light and then I lose time. Um, and it isn't until uh, uh, maybe... Uh, this probably happened around 8 p.m. and around 11, um, I find myself coming back into consciousness, but I'm standing in my crib, holding onto the railing of the crib, looking into the darkness and feeling that something had just left. Like I had that very strong sensation. Um, so, So that memory of that light is always so powerful in my mind. It is, it is a memory that is realer than real life. And this is something that a lot of contactees talk about, that these memories are just ingrained. And we call them marker memories. So this was a very powerful marker memory for me. Um, but I still didn't quite understand who I was interacting with or what that light was yet. Um, fast forward to 2016, I'm living in South America for two years. I'm going to school there. Um, and uh, one night I was teaching English at the academy and as I'm walking back home from work, uh, probably around 9 p.m., this cobblestone street, as I'm walking down, all of a sudden the cobblestone underneath me turns completely black and I lose time again and I get drawn into this dark light, uh, dark space. Um, and I have an experience where I am in front of these large beings 
um, that are connecting with me and hovering around me. And next thing you know, once again, it happens that I come back into consciousness. I'm in my bed. It's around three in the morning. And for the first time in my life, I begin to experience the sensations in my body. Um, and it was just incredibly vivid. And I didn't understand how I ended up in the, in the bed. I didn't know how I got home. And the next day when I talked to my parents, they never even saw me coming home. They didn't even remember what time I had come in. Um, so there was that scenario. Um, fast forward uh, to um, maybe 22, 22, I believe, or 21. Um, I am uh, uh, become very, very ill all of a sudden. I start fainting just randomly when I'm at stores. Um, I'm not sure what, what is happening to me and I go to the doctor and the doctor finds some kind of foreign amoeba-like reaction in my body where the body is just depleting its life force in every direction. Um, and, uh, you know, my uh, I become extremely weak, extremely dehydrated. Um, the doctors can't understand how to fix this issue. They tried consulting with other doctors in Europe. They couldn't find uh, an antibiotic because they, they thought it was a virus of some kind, or um, mm -hmm. they couldn't find an antibiotic that would uh, address the issue. I became extremely allergic to antibiotics, um, literally at that experience, because I began having extremely strong reactions. Um, and then during this three course, three weeks of being extremely ill, the doctor was saying, you know, you basically have two more months to live because of the direction of your vitals. Um, and, you know, my whole family started to get worried and concerned and visiting and talking, you know, about that. And next thing you know, one night I have this dream that this white light is approaching, this golden yellow light approaches right over my head um, with these blue and gray rays towards my body. Uh, and it creates this incredible warmth. And the next day I wake up and it's, I'm completely healed. Like there's nothing wrong with me. I go back to the hospital um, to talk to the doctor and the doctor says, I, I don't know. You're you're fine. There's nothing. There's no trace of any amoeba like anything in your body. Um, you know, whatever it is, it, it is. It worked. And that's all we care about. Um, wow. So, you know, that happened. And then um, I began to um, uh, my partner passed away uh, in 2008 um, uh, and uh, he had a heart attack. And uh, mm -hmm. as a result of that, you know, I began to go deep into my spiritual practice. I began to meditate and I found, I opened Bay Area Meditation, which turned in to a corporate meditation um, uh, company, essentially a wellness program. Mm -hmm. um, and we started from like 25 people in my room and it expanded up to hundreds of people at Google and Square and uh, oh, wow different companies like that around the Silicon Valley, um, sharing meditation with them, just simply teaching and holding space for an hour a day. And um, that really deepened my practice. And during that time, um, I was single after the passing of my partner for a few years. And what happened is that I became pregnant two times during the, that phase. Um, and I didn't understand why I would become pregnant um, in my mind, in my, you know, feelings i thought maybe you know it was this this idea of, of of bearing a child from my partner that had passed away um but combined with those experiences were intense dreams of being surrounded by beings and lights again always these lights that kept appearing um and they were not they were not like didn't happen all the time but the pregnancies would be up to three months and then i would experience a miscarriage uh, which was physically and hormonally very difficult to go through um, hmm. but there was no fetus. And so when I would go to the doctor, the doctor would say it's a blighted, ov blighted ovum, um, or he said that the body reabsorbed it, um, that it was stressed, that I had very intense feelings of wanting to have children. Um, and that's why I was creating these hormones in my body. Um, but, you know, there were three months of pregnancy with severe, you know, side effects, regular uh, pregnancy side effects. And so it was very confusing. I didn't understand, you know, what was happening. Um, and I, I just deep dived into my meditation practice to have some of these answer, these questions answered, essentially, what was love uh, and essentially what is truth? Because I began to notice that there is another side to this reality that we are not aware of. And it led me into a profound deprogramming of my programs, everything from the traumas, the deep fears, the anxieties. I mean, I sat with myself for, for uh, about three, four months maybe meditating up to nine hours a day, eating very little, oh, wow. you know, feeling very nourished because I was in deep, deep meditation. And what happened is that I began to discover 
a way of following my emotions that began to uncover memories. And those memories, once I um, understood them, almost as if remote viewing these memories of my life, all the way, I began to uncover memories all the way to my crib, to baby, even being in my mother's womb. And that's when, you know, my life started to make sense. I began to piece together uh, the series of these events and how they happened. And, and my questions began, became more clear about my purpose and my intention of my life. Um, and as, as soon as I began going deeper, I began to uncover ancestral programs coming down from my mother and my father's lineage, um, their grandparents. And it took me all the way back just simply by following the emotional trail back to my ancestral lineage. And it was incredible. It was, it was as if I had entered into some field, it went in, within a field of information, um, that essentially what I found at the end of that, uh, by doing that work, is that, you know, I was nothing that I believed I was up until that point. The roles that I had been playing were all something that were borrowed identities, borrowed ideas in order to survive. And at the mm -hmm. core of that was my true self, which was really more nothing than something. And that was really hard for me to understand. But what was on the other side of that was like, okay, well, what is there then? What is? What is real then? What is this construct of? Um, through the process of that healing, it began to uncover a lot of uh, ideas that we have about our reality, you know, the constructs of religion, society, uh, economics, uh, even our sex, the roles that we play, um, you know, and all of that deconstructed and helped me answer questions about why humans are the way that they are and why we embody states of suffering and repeat certain patterns. Um, and that was very profound. But what I what I discovered by going deep into the roots, it literally took me back to the origin of, of human race on this planet by following my ancestral lineage back to South America, going back to Europe, going back to Mesopotamia, simply by following these belief systems. And then I realized there is something more to the human race, to the origin of human race. Um, and it was in October at this point of 2013 on Friday the 13th that I had this experience um, where I had been reaching this uh, question about, you know, well, what what is there? What is beyond this? Who is actually creating this construct like who is behind all of this and that's where um at night uh, i went to bed at 12 o'clock and i'm awoken by this incredibly white light in my room um and i get out of bed and i look at my phone and it's 3 33 in the morning and it was the first time i had seen those you know uh, sequential numbers um, mm -hmm. but I walk over to my window and I look through the blind and the light is just so intense, so pure, so white. Um, and then my entire body paralyzes and I feel that my body is being brought up and drawn through the window, through the wall, into the other side on top of my garage uh, roof, which is right outside my window. And um, as I'm there looking at the white light, from the white light, I see these six lines that begin to manifest because the light is so bright, you know, and it, as they begin to manifest into the physical, um, well, I, they were already uh, physical, but they just looked, the shape looked distorted as they were coming from the light and as they came into more clarity. Um, one of them approaches me and raises the hand um, and I'm terrified. I'm looking around. It literally, <laughs> yeah, it literally feels like we are in some kind of capsule of time uh there is no wind there's no animals there's no sounds and i'm i'm wondering how is it possible that the neighbors don't see this white light and come out and help me or see me right you know, um but it was just absolute silence and stillness and the being um telepathically for the first time in my mind says the word calm and immediately just it feels like a warm feeling coming over my body a sensation um, almost like when you're taking an anesthetic, uh, you know, calm, hmm. com absolute calm. Uh, and I felt in that moment that I was safe. I felt that this person, this this being wasn't trying to harm me in any way, um, but was, you know, just sharing with me that space in that moment and um, basically directs me towards the craft and we move. Um, as I'm walking towards the craft, the craft is like this incredible lenticular shape of white, pink, purple, iridescent light, and it's a plasma, it's a metal that is a plasma that is coming in and out of shape. 
um, mm -hmm. and as we step in, but but the the actual technology of the of the craft, even though it was a plasma metal, it has a lot of very defined shape, and I'm I can see you know stepping into the craft the rail the railings. It, it's all made out of one piece. There's no separate pieces. Um, and it's very conscious, like it'll, it would respond to me when I would step into the craft. It's almost as if it was aware of my presence and I was aware of it. Um, mm. so it's a technology that, you know, you just cannot even imagine, even in films, um, have you seen something like this? And as you walk in, it's a, a curved hallway that goes to both sides and we go to the left and um, the five other beings go and they disappear around the bend and the one that is with me waves the hand again and creates a hologram within the craft that looks like a green fields blue sky um, and these strange giant obtuse triangular buildings it's a hologram within this craft and mm. i guess they didn't want me to see where i was going or what was around other than where i was supposed to be directed and so the little holographic path would guide me through the craft um, and I would walk down that path and into one of the obtuse triangle buildings. And as I walk into them, I see um, these extremely, extremely minimal furniture and garden. And I turn around. And as I turn around uh, from the entrance I came in, I see two tall grays. And so, mind you, these are gray beings. Um, okay. They have these gigantic black eyes. Okay. And I have to say, even though it's something that we have never seen before. I mean, I can't even fathom in my wildest imagination to create this being, but their energy is not evil. It's not um, manipulative or, or any weird energy. It is a very calm, very center, very peaceful, profoundly peaceful energy that they give off. And so, you know, that helps process uh, the way that they look essentially. Um, but their black eyes are, are deep and it feels as if something is moving behind those black eyes. Um, their bodies, it looks like a giant ant combined with a humanoid uh, and, and the skin is like um, kind of rough, like an elephant skin, uh -huh. uh, uh, very and tall, very tall. This is probably seven feet seven eight feet tall oh, and wow. the height of the beings have a lot to do with the dimensions from which they come from and the kind of i guess agendas that they're mainly connected with and i can explain more about that but um yeah it was interesting um so these these other two tall grays are taking and in the middle of them i see my aunt in her nightgown uh half asleep completely like unconscious walking directly in front of me and when i see that i mean i'm alarmed and i'm i call out her name and nothing comes out of my mouth and i begin to panic again so as they're walking and i see them hide in through the hologram and they begin to remove the hologram from around me and directly in front of me is three small grays probably around three four feet tall holding a holographic prism and uh with a it's a blue it's a it's a brilliant blue prism and on the right side i see an oval con uh, console with these incredible holographic map like system looks like some kind of navigating system absolutely beautiful and mm. beyond that i'm seeing the craft and that it's translucent and i see the stars on the other side of the craft um, and i can see like spotted through through the metallic plasma craft around me and um it is clearly lenticular. It's it's quite large, and it's actually larger on the inside than it looks from the outside, from what we came in. And um, I begin to look at these beings in front of me, and it had eight layers, this holographic prism. And the first layer, um, they begin to show me uh, alien language, this incredible symbols that look like a combination of, I don't know, um, probably like um, if you, some kind of alien type of shorthand, if you can imagine that combined with mathematical equations. That's how the language is. Oh, wow. And um, as I'm looking at it, I'm trying to remember and recognize some of these symbols, but I cannot, but the more I would try to focus on it, the less I would get. But when I calmed down for a moment and just watched it, I began to get images in my mind, incredible, mm -hmm complex images and what they were communicating through every single dot, every line, every curve 
were concepts that were universal. They, it was uh, concepts, the communication is like this. It's the individual, it's the, the room that they're in, the city that they're in, the country that they're in, the world, the galaxy, and then the universe in which they exist. And then they communicate what they're trying to communicate, so the concept. Um, so it's like they speak in universes is how I would describe that. But it is an expansive way of seeing and communicating that, you know, human minds, we know we cannot conceptualize, um, right. but it really changes the way that you take in the information. It's kind of closer to an absolute truth of some kind. Um, so if you can imagine massive amounts of information being transmitted through that language, um, they they show me that they're going to put it into a notebook. And it was a notebook that I recognized that I used for my design work. I was also an interior designer. Oh, okay. Um, I did a high, high, uh, high level events, event planning. That was a business. Of right. um, and so they removed that. And from the next layer, um, they begin to show me a constellation of seven lights. And I recognize those seven lights as being, um, the constellation of the Pleiades, which was called the okay. Seven Sisters. And as a child, um, I used to look up at this constellation and pray to it. I don't know why, but I had this incredible connection with it um, wow. that I never told my family, but my mother told me that it was the Seven Sisters. So that's the only thing I remember from, from that. Hmm. But as I saw it, they begin to expand on the planet Maya of the constellation of the Pleiades. Um, and we are transported to the planet Maya. And when we arrive at the planet Maya, um, it, is, it is a planet that is incredibly beautiful. It, it looks like the skies are in constant state of sunset. So like um, maybe purple pinks, the earth itself is like a deep purple, deep, deep purple. And mm -hmm. a lot of very, very incredible stone-like structures, um, you know, like, as if they were corroded by the ocean, like porous structures. Oh, okay. um, and the beings that are there are tall, white beings uh, with blue eyes, very tall. And I was one of those beings there. Um, and they had, they were essentially showing me. I mean, you were, you were one, explain that. You were one of those beings, like you were yes. white? Yes, I was a tall white being with, uh, with a long beard, with white hair, white hair, long white hair. Um, and everyone, all of the beings, they showed a group of six of those beings who they said were elders of the Pleiadian council of some kind. And I was one of those beings. And that when I look at them, you know, I recognize the being as my energy and I'm not sure how, how else mm -hmm. to explain that, but it's almost as if when you connect with, uh, you know, a relative or someone that you recognize, you know, this is what mm -hmm. I saw. Um, they take me to another timeline in the Pleiades, and I am sitting in front of thousands, thousands of these Pleiadian beings, and we are speaking, and it's like a, a conference telepathically, uh, you know, communicated, and there I am speaking to them, and I didn't really understand what that meant then, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I do now, uh, as things have developed over the past years. Um, so they take us back uh, to the craft and we are brought back and um, as I'm in the craft, they begin to uncover the next layer of this prism and from the layer comes out eight, um, eight little golden lights and from the golden lights, four of them begin to manifest into these children and um, there are two little girls and one little boy and one taller younger man the young little boy was this gorgeous blonde hair curly uh translucent like hair uh skin that is super thin kind of grayish white color skin and the pupils of his eyes were the size of our ocular socket um you oh, know wow. incredibly complex huh. pigmentation um just beautiful and the other two little girls one of them i was so shocked to recognize as this reoccurring dream that I had as a child where my mother would come out of a white light holding the hand of this little girl presenting her to me and I thought you know is this going to be um, maybe my daughter in the future or is it going to be my mother's daughter maybe she will get divorced and remarry you know these are the thoughts that I had as a right. child but it kept happening over and over again and when I saw the little girl I recognized her immediately Wow. Um, and the feeling that I got was this 
intense feeling, this maternal a feeling that comes over me where I began to recognize them and I said, oh my God, these are my, these are my children. And telepathically, there was that confirmation um, and they as well recognized me as their mother and immediately wow. began to uncover these memories that I had been with them before. I just had this flashback of myself in a dark reddish room holding this little child in my hand. Um, I had a flashback of being on a metallic slab in a giant room uh, where there were beings and lights around me, and I was essentially giving birth um, through my umbilical cord, through something in my umbilical cord. Um, and, you know, I was appalled because I said, how is it possible that you can't remember this kind of incredible memories? Um, where were right. you? you know, where was your mind? Um, and it just, I felt this intense feeling of guilt. And, and I was thinking, well, I'm, I'm ready to leave my human life and just be here and, and raise them. You know, I, I didn't know what was happening at that moment right. um, or yeah. how to react to them. But the taller of the beings was a, a young man that was combined with uh, reptilian genetics. And I, I, I know that that is sound very, very strange, but um, the skin was a little more green and almost as if it had a texture that seemed like uh, like reptile uh, skin, mm -hmm. but the eyes were reptilian and it was a very kind, gentle being, but it was shocking to see that kind of combination. At least the other three children did look more humanoid in their construct, although not 100%, but they were clearly a hybrids. Um, so that was also another shocking thing that was difficult to process. Um, after that, they removed the children from in front of me, and I began to get emotional because I said, are you taking them, like, you know, as, right. as a mother? Um, and uh, they, they asked me telepathically, why are you suffering? Don't you understand? This is what they were telling me. And they began to show me the construct of the matrix. They uh, showed in front of me a holographic um, tulip um that they would zoom into down to the molecular level of, of this of the tulip and i began to see how those molecules are oscillating to create these networks of energy um and then they showed me the the holographic construct of this world um they zoomed into a busy street in new york and they showed me the difference between the human and the soul and what that looks like as a light source and the light source was completely different vibrational frequency than anything else, the, the, the asphalt, the buildings, you know, the surroundings. Um, and all I saw was just little lights, lights that would connect up. And I began to realize that actually this construct is like a hologram. It is very much like a matrix. Um, and we are deeply interconnected. And finally, they threw me into this um, nebula, this rainbow nebula, which is the Orion Nebula. And um, as I'm floating in this nebula, um, I feel this intense feeling of interconnection. And in that moment, I became aware of myself as the earth self, uh, myself as a Pleiadian self. And I became aware of all the other selves in different planet times and space at that simultaneous moment. And that's where wow. it dissolved any feeling of fear, any feeling of um, doubt of any kind of my existence or that this was a strange experience even. Um, but next thing I know, uh, I see, uh, I've opened my eyes and I'm seeing my bed underneath me and um, I bring myself back into consciousness and I'm shaking and, you know, my, my body is hurting, like it, it painful, painful body, like as if it's sore. I have these burn marks over here um, hmm. that are burning when I touch them. Um, and my feet are dirty as if I, if I had left the house. And as I, you know, sink down onto the floor, uh, I reach over to grab my phone. My first thought was to call um, the hospital and call the police to try to figure out, you know, who to talk to about this circumstance. And, you know, I just thought in my mind how ridiculous it would sound to say that I had just been on, on a craft with alien beings and <laughs> right. children are there, you know, but, it, <laughs> but at that moment, you know, I thought, you know, I have to talk, I have to, this can't be crazy. Like some other person must have gone through this and I need help. Right. You know, who represents these oh, kinds sure. of situations. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, after I cried and the cry, the tears were of joy. They were in overwhelm because the feeling mm -hmm. of peace was also there. Um, but a confusion of where exactly I was. And I, you know, I, I fell asleep. I slept the entire Saturday until Sunday. Um, and I called my parents on Sunday. I let them know what had happened to me. 
Um, and to my surprise, as I'm telling my father about it, I'm asking him, did you guys ever had any experiences like this? They're like, yeah, actually, yeah, actually, we, you know, we've seen uh, UFOs, you know, when I was a kid, I used to see UFOs all the time. Uh, your grandmother also used to see UFOs all the time. And I was like, what, how, how did we not talk about this before? Right. Like the word alien never even came or you, huh. you know, never in our family. Um, and this seems so matter of fact to you guys. And they're like, yeah, you know, they're just experiences. Um, so it took a moment to process, but the next day when I went back to work and I'm sitting in front of my student um, to teach meditation, my gosh, her entire body is just illuminated with light and I'm seeing, I'm feeling her organs in my body, literally feeling how the water is going down her throat, feeling um, the emotion and the stress that she was feeling, her thoughts, everything. I knew I was, knew everything about her in that moment. Um, and you know, what had happened is that these uh, intense psychic abilities had been activated. And to be honest, if it wasn't for that, I myself would have thought that that experience was just a really intense dream mm -hmm. um, because it was just surreal. But three months, I couldn't leave my house. Um, I couldn't go anywhere public. I couldn't see people because I didn't know how to manage the intensity of this mm -hmm veil that had lifted between myself and another human being um, in which I was seeing everything. So it took a really long time to integrate that and um, several years really. And I, and I hadn't spoken about it other than to my partner at the time. Um, and it wasn't until 2018 um, that I decided to get hypnotherapy in order to better understand these experiences. Um, and that's when it, I opened up another level of information. Um, where my pursuit was to understand the truth of contact of the hybridization program, what the role is of the human. And I uncovered and began to download literally the history of the human race back to Mesopotamia um, and how it developed, how our human race has genetically been developed, modified even um, in, into what it is today. And um, what ET contact is essentially for a human what the soul is. And I began to uncover it was 2017 was a powerful year um, where I began to understand about DNA. And essentially that was the core of the information that we're talking about genetics as one of the most powerful currencies of this universe, because essentially it is the blueprint of the soul and from which we are experiencing the non-physical and the physical simultaneously through our life experiences. Um, so that's where my perspective began to change and mature in this realm of ET contact. Mm -hmm. um, and I basically sold my business and just dedicated myself to doing this work of research and trying to understand uh, the phenomena better. So. Yeah. Th so, <laughs> oh gosh, Geraldine, there's so much. That's what I meant by saying part five, part six. But, um, you know, so what I'm understanding is the hybridization. People need to understand that because when you were saying the amoeba that they were um they were coming to you and implanting their um what what are they implanting to get you pregnant mm -hmm. there that's hybridization and that happens all the time it's yeah. not but let's backtrack because this is a very delicate topic because we're talking about sex we're talking about life and right. we're talking about boundaries essentially seemingly being crossed okay exactly now our sexual energy is the most powerful life force that the human has within uh the semen and the egg of the of the divine feminine and masculine is encoded all of the history of that human lineage we have encoded the genetic ancestral lineage since the origin of time. In fact, just 2% of our DNA writes this program to create this physical construct, all of the incredibly complex systems of this body. The rest of that is, a, is encoding information that is intercommunicating with what we call the morphogenetic field. And the morphogenetic field is essentially the instruction manual that brings into form this physical best vessel with all of its complexities. Within the communication with the morphogenetic field and the physical body and the DNA, the information that's, that's there, 
we, when we incarnate into the physical body, we are binding to an ancestral family lineage. Right. In fact, what I understand now is that our ancestral lineages call forth the soul for it to come into incarnation. Okay. Mm. Now, this is a vibrational frequency communication because every single human has a vibrational signature that is absolutely encoded for its absolute optimum ascension, not only of that individual, so me, you, but for the, for the ascension of the entire ancestral lineage, each human is encoded and equipped um, to transcend ancestral traumas and all of the, you can say, uh, limited uh, limitations of the ascensions of all our ancestors. So wherever- All the limiting beliefs, like limiting all, their, beliefs. all that we've, right. Yeah. So every human is equipped with, with its highest potential and also its lowest potential. So if we take a look at our ancestral lineage, we see our ancestors, some of them have reached great levels of consciousness and awareness and, uh, you know, powers of, of all kinds. And some of them have reached incredibly low aspects. Okay, so I want you to think of incarnation and procreation this way. Procreation is more than just the idea because for humans, we are a little bit brainwashed through social engineering that bringing a child into this world is really about just, you know, passing your name on. But if you think about the bigger picture, there's a responsibility here. When you create a human, you are passing on information. And if that information is just a re repetition of traumas and suffering mm -hmm. into the child, you are just procreating suffering in this world. Okay? Exactly. So there is a major responsibility and there is a way of creating life that is the opposite of repeating these counter creative um, humans, essentially, that are limited. Now, that's not to say that any human life isn't uh, important or mm -hmm. valuable because in reality in the bigger picture every single human that is born into this construct is designed to create harmonious balance in the construct of the whole okay, okay. so with this in mind we also create in many different ways because we are creators we create through the words that we speak every word has a form has a shape has a geometry has a vibrational frequency that's creating ripple effects in the entire universe okay we don't mm -hmm. understand that but it's very true every intention every sound um, every action okay so we also create interdimensionally all of those through the senses are our ability to manifest and create in the interdimensional realms that being said in our dream style dream time now this has been studied by ancient cultures since the origin of time the ability to practice lucidity in dream states is one of the most powerful tools that all of the sages have been working towards in order to practice and train for death which is what the ancient Egyptians were about, Mayans, American Indians, uh, you name it, all of the ancient cultures of the world revered and studied deeply the afterlife and the ability to navigate dream states. What does that mean? Actually, the majority of our activity happens in our dream state. Remember, half of our entire life is sleep. Right. Okay? So if you think about what we are doing in our dream state, this is actually where we are navigating other dimensional levels through the different varying brain patterns, brain waves that we access at the time of REM or other brain states, we begin to enter into higher dimensions and our spiritual work and the level and essentially how DNA is inherited through our, our ancestry, um, how mm -hmm. many generations have reached high levels of consciousness in your DNA? They create mutations in the DNA that allow you to access higher octaves of those dream time travels every new generation. Okay? okay. How do we know this? By interviewing so many contactees from around the world, we begin to realize that actually contact is passed down through the generations. Okay, so for example, a human has connections with the Pleiadians, like in my case, um, I take a, and, and after I was part of this documentary, Extraordinary, the, uh, the CS, when that documentary came out, that was the first time that my entire family learned about my contact experiences. Um, oh, wow. But it started the conversation and right. that conversation. Um, here's another incredible thing. My aunt on the night of this abduction on October the 13th, 
remembers experiencing beings coming and injecting something in her back. And next thing you know, she ends up in the hospital with 110 fever at like four in the morning. But mm-hmm. then after a few hours, she's 100% fine. They don't know what happened. They don't know how. And that happened exactly on the night that I was taken. But we didn't know that until years, six years later when the film came out and we talked about it. Okay, so. But that's when you saw her on the, in the, exactly. she passed you, right? Exactly. Okay. So I saw her. But, right. You know, I, I didn't talk to her about it because I wasn't sure what was happening. And it wasn't until six years later when the film came out that she saw it and she was like, oh my God, you know, I had this experience and those beings sound like the ones I saw and we were shocked, you know, and Hmm. my other aunt had also experienced it. So it turns out the entire family and what, you know, I, I was able to experience hypnotherapy with some of my family members. And what we uncovered through that was that there were very similar lineages of beings that we had been communicating with and interacting in these experiences. And I noticed this in a lot of families, like I'm talking hundreds of families that are open to having these conversations. Uh, When we go into take them into deep hypnosis, we uncover Mm -hmm. these kinds of experiences. And um, yeah, so um, essentially our DNA holds information of our human life. Remember epigenetics. Epigenetics is basically how our environment is influencing uh, our, our data, our DNA data right. over time. And all of that. The is- food, everything. Yes. All of everything. Yes. So in the same way, we are also storing data that we are collecting in our dream state. And in our dream state, we are detached from the physical body, navigating these dimensions, collecting experiences and experiencing. And so this is where ET contact happens. In your dream. Exactly. Most of our contact experience is in the dream. In some cases, when there is an integration of these higher dimensional vibrational frequencies integrating into the physical body, people have extremely conscious experiences like what I had. Uh, you can uh, think of, uh, you know, stories like Whitley Strieber, um, all of these uh, contactees that are very well known that were completely conscious and awake. And then they have these experiences that is due to the vibrational frequency of this, of the physical vessel at the time of the experience. And that's what happened to me. Okay. okay. Because I had been meditating for such a long time and uncovering and raising the frequency enough for me to be able to see them recall and experience right. the physical that this is why I recalled this memory. But what that also tells us is that humans are having these experiences and not remembering. They only can recall marker memories, which is essentially what was happening to me all my life, right? Hmm. Since the age mm-hmm. of five, having contact experiences glimpses of the experience, but not really understanding, um, but deeply ingrained. And when you begin to uncover those memories, it's contact experiences, contact, which is your interdimensional navigation. Okay. So the hybridization program essentially is utilizing our genetics. Okay. The holographic construct of the genetic in order to create life in order to create souls. Because what happens with the DNA, DNA is a holographic projection of the soul data into the three dimensional realm, but it also displays itself in many dimensions because we're multi-dimensional beings within our physical bodies. We have all dimensional planes available to us. So our DNA holds that information and that information is what is being utilized to create these new souls. So that's that's what the hybridization, these experiences, are something that are agreed upon in in ways that transcend our ability to understand time and space because Mm -hmm. we think of time as linear but in reality time is a spherical construct of it's all occurring simultaneously okay and i know that's a mind bend i know i'm getting Um, better at it (laughs) i'm getting better at understanding it but yes i i'm i'm there i'm a lot farther along than i was a couple years ago Yeah. And I think a lot of people are going to start getting it even more because the veils are thinning, right? Right. When the veil thins, we can see simultaneously other realms and people that have experienced ghosts, people that have experienced, um, you know, the apparition of angels, for example, you are all navigating these interdimensional realms. In fact, we are surrounded by beings and entities all the time. 
But because mm. our radio, it's like a radio channel is only in the human, uh, you know, right. spectrum of colors and frequency, we can only see that. But as you activate your higher faculties through into through meditation, um, you then can access a wider band range of visibility. That's what mm -hmm. essentially it is to encounter these interdimensional realms. So the same thing happens in the dream state. Okay, the more you activate, the more you will remember and see. In fact, recovering ancestral memory, memory is the key to, um, to uh, the highest level of the human experience. Okay, because remember, mm -hmm. when we are born, we, we go through a zero point through the birth canal where we forget that we are this interdimensional being connected to all things simultaneously. And it's through that zero point that when we're born, we still remember some things. Some of us are born with a lot of memory. Right. Those are the crystal children, rainbow children, indigo children um, that are deeply, deeply connected to these past lives and memories of themselves. Um, and as children, they can see a lot. They see beings. They have friends. They have invisible friends. Remember, mm -hmm. um, all of these are very real, but we need to understand the connection between them and link the dots that we are navigating interdimensionally, perhaps all our life until we start to forget through trauma which blocks out and lowers our vibrational frequency and deactivates our abilities to see these realms. And so usually by the time we're adults, you know, we're deeply disconnected because then we go through the hormonal changes, um, you know, and that plays a huge role. Um, our chakra system from the time of birth to the time of, se of seven years old is embedded and um, developed completely developed and whatever occurred to us during those first seven years creates filters of our perceptions. Mm -hmm. um, so they define the, the theme of the entire life actually. Okay. Right. So this also will affect the kind of agreements that we remember we made coming into this world. So a lot of these hybridization agreements are actually things that we're making simultaneously with these interdimensional beings. It is, creation we are we are creators that is what we're here to do um, through the key of experiencing the observation experiment of obser uh, of experience right so we mm -hmm. essentially have to learn um, how to discern our experiences by coming by waking up consciousness coming into lucidity in waking state and dream state so you understand why you are doing the things you do because Many of you, even right now, you don't even know half the things that you did yesterday and why you did them. Like you're very unconscious, like we're not even in the present moment. So right. this is just to give you an example of how we come across these experiences of hybridization and we're shocked. We're like, you know, what? I, I didn't agree to this. Like, how did this happen? But actually we are participating in creating universes um, because of our core data that is multidimensional and that's the, the uniqueness of the human vessel. Um, it is so powerful. The human can create in many dimensional realms. And I believe that these interdimensional beings, um, which are mainly interacting in the, in the first 13 dimensional layers are what create and experience duality in this matrix. Now hmm. duality, the dualistic, um, model of creation is very unique to this construct. Okay. Right. Um, so the female and the male unite in order to create the third. Okay. So we're experiencing that in fractal form in all layers of our ex human experience. So these beings create these hybrids and the souls that are created are a combination, the genetic modification of, of data, of, ge of genetic data is essentially like uniting vortices or portals of information to create another human that is connected to all of this information. We are hybrids as well. Okay. Right. So um, the hybrid program is not something new. We actually are the product of a, a hybrid programs. We, and this is why we are able to be interdimensional and be connected to so many different races. Well, wow. let me, okay. So you're, you're part of three different hybrid hybridization, um, lineages, right? So there's the reptilian, 
um, the master, um, and the reptilian, and then the, there's one more. The... Yeah. Um, so agendas, let's talk about agendas. Really. Okay. There can be infinite numbers of agendas. Okay. But we can simplify them in this manner. Your vibrational frequency in your waking state and your dream state will define the kind of experiences that you have interdimensionally. If Got your it. vibrational frequency is really low and it's not, remember, your frequency is the collection of your ancestral history. So if right. within your ancestral history, you have a lot of trauma, your frequency, unless you do the shadow work, won't be that high. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's just, that's just the way it is. And the part of this experience of human. So that being said, um, draconian and let's say the lower vibrational programs are the creation of entities beings that are destructive self-destructive they are counter creative beings that we help co-create on the higher end of that our highest level of evolution through our history is going to create high vibrational organisms that are super dna activated which means that they are lucid they are conscious co-creators that are able to access higher dimension information. So we can create on both ends of the spectrum, okay? And the intention behind that creation will define that. In fact, the way that we have intercourse defines the vibrational signature that we pass on to the seed that is being created. Mm -hmm. And this is something that is studied in um, white tantra or alchemical transmutation practices, sexual alchemy. Um, mm -hmm. Because when the human purifies uh, all of these lower states of creation, of intention, um, it basically becomes a communion with the source. And when, when two individuals that practice that purification come together to create a, a living organism, a being, um, the, the DNA is charged with that intention. And that means DNA is more activated. So the child will usually be born super psychic um, with abilities, more conscious, more awake, remembering their past lives more. Okay, just to mm. simplify, those are those waves of indigo children, crystal children that we have coming in. And we're going into even more awakened waves of children going forth now. Okay. Oh, yeah, because, for sure. Yeah, because uh, actually sexual alchemy is starting to come back now. This is the healing of the divine feminine. It is the rebalancing of the feminine masculine energies as we go into the era of Aquarius. Our creation, the quality of our creation is becoming refined. Um, into pure intention and that requires absolute authenticity and the cultivation of a high frequency from all human beings and that's where we're headed now so those of you that are creating hybrids that are highly highly advanced these are souls that some of them get pulled back into the incarnation cycle in order to heal the ancestral lineages. The souls that you're creating in the hybridization program are the children that you're bringing in. Okay. And essentially the, um, there are, wait, wait, wait. So, the, but the, when the, when you talk about the, this, the male, the dad and the mom, the husband and wife come together and create this, um, have an intention to create this soul their vibration at that time is has something to do with the soul they're creating absolutely absolutely okay now let me tell you if and this is something that i teach a lot about um on my youtube channel and in my classes but it's really important because most of us when we have children sometimes it's an accident sometimes we want to pass our name along you know um, and a lot of people unfortunately we create children from the ego uh, because we want to see ourselves, we want to create something, um, you know, actually the idea of having children has to be taken in a level of up utmost care, because the souls that we bring in, if we don't purify our traumas and do the shadow work, you know, we're, we're cre creating an organism, a human that is going to repeat those patterns in their lives. So right. if you're unconscious of what's causing you suffering in your life, 
you know, you're literally propagating that on. So the key is that to become conscious, do the shadow work, raise your vibrational frequency to the highest in order to alchemize the sexual energy from a state of lust or just um, pleasure, mindless, unconscious creation into mm -hmm. intentional creation. And what happens with that is that the DNA is activated. The strength, the health, the potency of that DNA is highly, highly conducive, okay? So why is it called alchemy? Because we're refining, let's say, a lower metal, let's say a raw metallic substance into gold. Why gold? Because gold is the most conducive metal that exists. And we literally create particles of that gold uh, in, in ormus form uh, that crystallizes in the pineal gland through the transmutation of bringing sexual energy up the kundalini, or the, which is life force. Kundalini just simply means life force. Mm -hmm. we, we are activating that energy through the energy centers of the body, the chakras. And that requires the purification of these limiting belief systems on every vibrational frequency level, okay? So from the root up to the crown is different vibrational frequencies of information that you hold within your DNA. The chakras organize that information. So okay. experiencing Kundalini has to happen in every single one of the chakras, not just the root. A lot of people are stuck on, oh, we had a whole yeah, just the root. Right. Mm -hmm. so every single one until you get up to the integration of the lower, the middle, and the upper dantian, which is means energy center. Okay. So that work activates your DNA, which means that in dream time, you are lucid, meaning that you're no longer unconsciously co-creating in dream time, even in the hybridization program or any kind of contact experience is no longer parasitic okay that's the key you now become a sovereign co-creator in which you are interacting with these beings or interdimensional realms in a way of consciousness that's the thing how do you know what you're doing there is that you're going to uncover through your healing the ancestral history of what you're doing in these um, simultaneous lives and so the creation of these new souls that we bring into the earth are now even more equipped to um, ascend the ancestral lineages. You're healing the earth, okay? Because the earth is an extension of us and we are an extension of that earth. And essentially the earth has its own DNA. We know it as the Akashic records. It's the DNA mm -hmm. of the earth. But what we tap into when we go into the ancestral lineage is the DNA of the earth. Okay, so the earth is a fractal of the human body. And that's why when we have wars and situations like these in, in the world, it is the turmoil that the collective human race has unresolved within it. And we're going through a lot of mm. that right now. We're going through right. major transformations. But the sooner we come into a harmonious balance within us, it will be reflected in the whole, in the world outside of us. So every human that we bring in has to also embed in their DNA this healing, this harmony. It has to be propagated in our um, collective lineages, okay, in the human race. So the hybridization program to summarize essentially is our innate ability to co-create. And we are understanding that we are co-creating in many dimensions simultaneously. Both men and women participate in the hybridization program. And oftentimes... Wait, how do, how do men, if they can't have yeah. babies? Yeah, so men essentially through the semen uh, is, is being collect, collected by these beings. Um, and that's how we see it through our human filter, because that's biologically how we function. Um, right, but... Right. This, this genetic information is contributing from the male intention, from the ancestral lineage of the male, in order to create these organisms, these interdimensional organisms. Now, I want to make very clear that this system, this, um, this world, this contract, this holographic construct of our matrix is so beautifully organized because every human um, is united with their partner. Um, through a self-organizing healing system of the earth, okay? There is no partners that come together randomly, even if it's a one-night stand, okay? 
the union mm -hmm. of these two individuals and their entire ancestral lineage were designed to unite. And when intercourse happens, there is literally a reason for that intercourse in which something is being created. It might not manifest into a child into the physical realm, but it will manifest right. into some form of creation in other dimensional realms. And that's what we don't understand. Even if there's no baby. Exactly. Yeah, I don't get that. Exactly. Okay. The combination of that genetic data, even if it's a, a one-time thing, is orchestrated through vibrational resonance. It is the self-organizing intelligence of this earth that brings humans into this union for the creation of something. And unless the human is lucid and aware of why they are attracting this other human, they're not going to understand the agreement that they had. So the hybrid program mm -hmm. functions in the same way. People are having dreams of being united with strangers in which they are experiencing these experiences of intercourse from which begins a hybrid experience. They, they will continue that dream. One time it will be with the intercourse. The next time they are uh, having a dream of giving birth or they have dreams of children being presented to them. And just to give you an idea hmm. how the hybridization program functions, essentially it is, it is like this. Um, there is an uh, inception, there is uh, insemination, there is a gestation process, there is an extraction, and there is a presentation. The presentation is extremely important because remember in our biology, um, fetuses that are born, organisms that are born, have a higher success rate when they are taken care of or experience the nurturing of the mother, which is a vibrational imprint. Right. That imprint has to happen for that organism to develop into its best capacity. It is the same with these beings, okay? It has to be, it's as if the vibrational frequency is sealed by the meeting, which is what happened to me in 2013. And this in the hybridization program seems to be what most people remember the most. They have dreams of children being presented to them. It can either be from an angelic being or relative or one of these beings or just the light. Um, but these are vivid dreams that they experience, okay? Yeah. Um, and um, essentially, for, for the male, uh, what they will mostly recall is a dream of some kind of intercourse scenario, okay? Um, and then they will have um, a, dream, uh, a dream of the presentation. Uh, and then they have other dreams of uh, contact experiences or sightings of UFOs. And I just want to mention that the sightings of UFOs is just the beginning of usually very complex experiences that happen in the dream state following the vision, the, the sighting, mm. okay? And UFO sightings are very much an individual thing. Um, now, there are UAPs and, and UFOs that are um, terrestrial technology, but though I am talking about the interdimensional uh, technology, the beings that are actually navigating these realms, people that see them are genetically encoded to that familiar vibrational frequency of the sightings. That we're seeing. And they activate activities in dream state. So usually people will have a lot of dreams that night after seeing before or after even. So I just want to mention that. Huh. Uh, yeah, that, I'm, that's a, such a great way for me to under, understand that. When you say you have 24 hybrid children, were you with them to connect with your, you went to connect with them when they were born? No. Um, uh, well, the, the, it's like this, the 24, um, basically you can visualize 24 eggs were extracted from this organism, okay. but in terms of the timeline of when they were created, it's not very easy to understand that from our human timeline, because some of these hybrids were agreed upon in past lives and contributed to in past lives. But my memory of them, when I began to uncover my own genetic information, I became aware of it here in this lifetime. Okay. okay. So some of these organisms that were created from those 24, um, some of them did not manifest into a physical form of a soul. 
they were just right. frequency okay. that was created and that frequency creates a ripple effect in the greater picture of things and that's all that it is designed to do okay, okay. some of these organisms that are created are meant for more counter creative more nefarious negative programs these are practices of the inversion of light utilization so dark magic dark sex magic for example which completely destructs the multidimensional body of an organism those people that are sexually abused put into these mk programs into these my lab abductions um, you know that is uh, these dark shadow governments that are utilizing the sex energy in, in an inverted manner um, is mm -hmm. also the dark side of these kinds of hybridization programs, which is why we have children that go missing and utilize in these cult programs. Okay, mm. so those okay. are driven by the Draco uh, ruling, uh, the Draco ancient uh, Draco rituals of the inversion of, of the most potential, the most potent creative life force that the human has, which is the, the misuse of sex energy, right? So mm. that magic is utilized in Hollywood, in the entertainment industry. Um, it's utilized in mass social engineering in order to debilitate the power of the human in very profound ways, okay? So um, all of those are the inversion of the light. On the other side of the spectrum, the programs that are uh, mostly aided by interdimensional beings are usually intended for high vibrational frequency and healing of the ancestral lineage, which is the white magic, the white sex uh, magic, essentially. Um, I don't want to call it, it's not magic at all. It's, it's alchemy. It's the transmutation right. of lower sexual in intention into the highest pure form of creation and that's what they are utilizing and working with the human to do and when i say they i want to try to move away from the idea even the reptilians they are not separate from us remember they are our ancestors in fact if we talk mm -hmm. about the origin of the human race we are descendants of these draconian lineage we are descendants of uh, Arctur Arcturians, Pleiadians, these angelic beings, we have all of that in our DNA. So I want to make very clear, we are one, period. And that's something that is very difficult when we break these topics down, because we, we, we tend to want to compartmentalize these things. But we are participating in the co-creation of balance. Remember, in order for duality to exist, there must be the dark in order for that light to exist. So we are learning right. essentially how to experience temporary separation in order to reunite with the source, which is what this life experience is designed for. So I, I want you to, to try to think of trying not to get distracted in the idea of separation or compartmentalization, um, because all of these experiences are valuable for your alchemy. Um, and also, um, the 24 hybrid children, some of which, um, you know, are brought back into the incarnation cycle um, through other ancestors that exist in this timeline, um, are encoded with my awakening. And so that's that takes us to the other part of the hybridization program. Um, our children, remember that our, our children have our cells within them their entire life. So we right deeply connected which is why we are able to have telepathic communication with them they feel us they know us they know we know when they're going to call we know when we're going to feel them um, so that is a powerful ability of the human interconnectedness we also experience that with our hybrid uh, creations okay um, and we we call them hybrids but we're what we're talking about is not necessarily species i want you to get away from the idea of species and think more of vibrational frequency okay Imagine instead of creating the image of a form like a reptilian or an angelic being you just think of just variations of frequency that's really what this hybridization is about okay um and what is raising the frequency it sorry what was that it, it, the hybrid that that is for the raising of the vibration for getting to, yes. to keep to go where we're going in this 
on this planet. It can be. And it all depends on us because because of this network through quantum non-locality that allows the cells to be in resonance with the other organisms that are in resonance with us, our transmutation, our ascension will ascend all of our descendants. So everything that we're creating, even our own children, we can heal them with right. our healing. Right. So that's how interconnected we are. And remember that even you and I, me and you, we have just 2000 years ago, you and I have a relative in common. So we are one family. So this is why we talk about when the majority of the human race enters into a high vibrational frequency, we create this collective mass that is now moving, which is happening right now. And we are powerfully going through that this month of October, actually tomorrow, we have a major eclipse um, Mm. that is a gateway opening into these powerful transformation energies for all humanity. Veils are dropping quickly. And as we move into the age of Aquarius coming into 2024, um, the concept of interdimensional contact will be widely known and widely experienced with more frequency by every human. Right now, we are going through an education process of trying to understand what all of this is. But many of you will discover that you are creating in these other dimensional realms, many, huh. many things. Yeah. So when the world is going through, we'll end it. I know we're, we've gone over and I really, oh, I've, yes. this is so amazing. I'm Thank you for your time. But when you, when you watch the the things that are going on in the world, the wars, the sex trafficking, you know, the, all the dark that's coming into the light right now, you're, are you in your mind? Because you know, um, you can see it from a higher perspective. Are you, are you not in fear or you just know this is all part of the program that we're have to, we came here for to get to where we're going? Well, you know what? I take it as a wake up call because, um, you know, our our sex, unfortunately, because of the way we've been programmed, the concept of sex is taboo for most people. Most people can't even have a conversation about sex. Our deepest desires, either in sex or it desires to experience love, uh, life, expansion, all these things that, that we desire the most. Our desires are our biggest, humanity's biggest weakness because we keep it in the shadow. And what's happening in the world around us with sex trafficking is a manifestation of us not accessing those shadows, Mm. those dark parts of us, the way that we feel about sex, um, the taboos, the shame and the guilt that we feel about our desires is that manifestation in those things that we're seeing outside of us. So if you want to change those things, you need to sit with yourself and face your deepest desires and come to terms with creating a harmonious um, uh, balance between your darkest parts of you. And when I went through this healing process, I was shocked what I found within my subconscious mind. Um, I want you to take a look at uh, things that cause you sexual pleasure, abuses that you've experienced in your life, how they have traumatized you, how they limit your ability to come into intimacy. Because the reason why sex um, uh, power is inverted through the dark shadow is in order to sever really powerfully the connection between the physical and the non-physical because what happens when we experience shame we fractalize into many fractals of ourselves and that fractalization creates a disbursement of life force in which we become a a centrifugal motion of depletion of life force rather than creators. But when we gather that, when we integrate that, we become centripetal, which is actually the most powerful magnetism of manifestation, attraction, creation. So we have to wake up consciousness to the things that are keeping us in states of dispersion and regather that energy. That means your energy isn't leaked in sexual energy, uh, you know, in uh, social media, in activities in which we are escaping um, the deep, deep emotions that we have a hard time uh, feeling and experiencing. So that is the reflection of all of our uh, violences that we do towards ourselves in the greater mm-hmm. humanity right now. Mm-hmm. Wow, I love that. So you see the age of Aquarius is in 2024? Well, we are already in the age of Aquarius. We've been progressing here, but we're going to feel it 
uh, in 2024 more. You know, it's it's progressive because these are major transformations. I mean, when we take a look in 20, uh, 2050, 2030, uh, look back at this time, it's, it's going to be a completely different uh, world, okay? Hmm. And so that requires a preparation. The human has to learn how to activate and master their higher faculties, your intuition, your telepathic communication. You think all of that is just fantasy and things you see in movies? Well, those are going to be your tools for survival, um, in the future, because without the cultivation of that, you are deeply manipulated, you're not sovereign, and you're at the mercy of the manipulation of unconscious states, right? right. So this is uh, actually the refinement of being the new human, as I call the new human, as we go into this apotheosis state. Right. And well, you, you know, I always talk about this kind of, you're, you've been the advanced version of my interviews, but when the, um, you know, the people that are still in that manipulation phase and the fear base, and you say we're already in the age of Aquarius, which is love and, you know, we're moving there. There'll still be two, there'll be the contrast of the human. Always. Yes. Well, you see, that's wonderful that you brought up love because that's essentially what we're going to now love. We have to completely erase our ideas of Disney um, and romantic concepts of love because that will limit your understanding. Okay. That's mm -hmm. very basic, just too dualistic way of understanding love. But the love that we're talking about is the integration of the shadows and the duality within us, our feminine and our masculine being integrated within us, having that alchemical marriage, which is essentially creating a regulated nervous system, okay, because you heal your trauma, mm -hmm. and biochemically, bioelectrically, you become a powerful conduit for healing yourself and the whole and creation and manifestation. So through your thoughts, emotions, and words, you are healing the world. That's right. how powerful you are. That is the alchemical marriage. That is the embodiment of unconditional love because your actions are not service to self anymore or survival. Remember, we want to move out of survival. The, the being in survival is the embodiment of the matrix. When we move out of survival in a state of creation, we are able to come in to an empowered state of vulnerability. That is the key. Being in mm -hmm. an empowered state of vulnerability where you can come into your absolute authenticity. This is the embodiment of love. That's actually what love really means. Um, and it's a state of being rather than a feeling or an emotion. But the outcome, so let me tell you how to get to that, is by training yourself to be in a zero point. The zero point of, of neutrality from a place of non-judgment. This mm -hmm. is the key. So cultivate that, regulate the nervous system, and from this state of non-duality, this non-judgment, emerges this unconditional love in which you see all things as a part of you as an extension of you and because of that you are incredibly mindful of your thoughts actions emotions and intentions because you understand that you are not dealing with something other than you it's you that you're hurting right. that you're feeling your negative emotions and suffering and depression in your body is actually the depression of the collective um, so we are now coming into um, being, uh, you know, universal citizens, essentially, where we now begin to think and talk like the aliens were communicating to me um, with that language. They speak in universes, well, live in universes where your actions now are for the well-being of the whole human race, rather than just that immediate thing, you know, and it completely changes um, what you're doing day to day, you know, and how mm -hmm. you're doing it. That way yes. of yeah. you know but when you'd ex explain that just now i live like that and I'm, it's not like a bragging thing but i do live that way i do see it that way but it's it's been a journey you know it's not but do you feel like there's certain souls like you that come that chose to come to this time in the on the earth to move the move the planet up to the higher vibration to the fifth dimension do you know that yeah, absolutely. Well, um, you see, the thing about talking about the fifth dimension is we're not only going into the fifth dimension, we're actually activating and we're constantly moving in and out of all dimensions. That's the thing I want right. you to broaden this concept. Um, uh, but 
what we're doing in that process is that we activate DNA. Okay, so every human that is incarnated in this timeline is a powerful warrior. And I, I'm not just saying that. It's, I mean, if you were to see the lineages, the bloodlines that have come into this incarnation to deal with the pandemic that we've gone through, okay, that was a major awakening, global awakening. Imagine the entire world stood still, you know, and from there emerged a major spirituality for the collective. Mm -hmm. That was so necessary. So the souls that have incarnated at this time are designed with their DNA to pull forward and clean up many generations of ancestral lineages collectively. Um, so every human at this time, even the ones that are in states of suffering, okay, all people that do evil are in states of severe suffering. Mm -hmm. So even those are playing a role in the healing of this collective in order to create that Trend, that transduction, you know, that transduction, that spark, um, which creates this fusion within us to alchemize higher frequencies. Um, and many uh, humans that are really awake right now, you know, they're kind of the leaders. And many, many of you out there that are in these very heightened states of consciousness, you might feel very alone. Mm -hmm. And it is a very lonely, uh, seemingly very lonely because we are literally pioneers and we are paving the path, the unknown path, uh, by recreating the human from everything that we've known in states of comfort, in these cyclical patterns of suffering, the matrix constructs of our reality. We are breaking all of that in order to create a new way of being. But I just want to remind you, for those of you that do feel alone, that remember that as soon as you begin to remember and activate your ancestral memory, you've actually lived many lifetimes and are living many lifetimes in many civilizations of advanced uh, knowledge, all you're doing is you are connecting to those fractals of yourself and you're anchoring, you're pulling that knowledge of those uh, advanced civilizations into this earth. So always remember that you have encoded within you that you've done this before many times. Um, and once you remember that this paving of the path now just opens up, it illuminates forward and you see the circle of life that you are um, helping to cult cultivate in this earth realm um, that you've done many times. So hopefully, it, you know, you don't feel alone. You understand we're not alone at all. Right. When you, when you dream, do you have an intention before you go to bed to connect? How does that work for you? Uh, no, you know, it's it's not so much about having an intention, but just being in a constant state of observation, but lucid, lucid, absolutely lucid. And to train lucidity in dream state, you have to practice lucidity every moment of your day, and it will bleed into your dream state. You'll become conscious in dream state. Um, I created an acronym called GPAC, which represents oh, yeah. grounding, protecting, aligning, and co-creating. This is a wonderful toolkit, multidimensional hygiene that will help you practice being fully grounded in the present moment. And that conscious awareness of yourself um, in dream time helps you discern. So that, for example, if you find yourself in a dream with some lower entity beings, you can immediately choose to alchemize that and change what is happening in that moment. That's the key. So what I do in my dream time, most of my dreams are actually most of it is healing other people in other dimensional realms or even people mm -hmm. on earth. Uh, sometimes I will meet these people at a later time in my life. Um, you know, so it's, it's constantly moving through these dimensions. And I know a lot of people are doing this right now and they remember their dreams. Yeah. My um, dreams. And why I'm asking that is because my dreams are, I get up in the morning, I go, Oh my gosh. And my husband's like, okay, let's hear the dreams. I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's so, they're so different. They're so vivid. Yes, yes. I even smelled, perfect. smelled something. And I'm like, Oh, you know that, you know, the smell of those jerseys, those like when, you know, you got your soccer, um, um, yeah. uniform and he goes, yeah, I go, I had a Jersey on and I was smelling that smell. And I it was like, Amazing. and I don't remember smelling in my dreams right now. It's three, 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 by the way. That's so beautiful. I love that. I guess we had to go over to get 333. Get to 333. Absolutely. And this is the perfect anniversary time for this uh, 10th year. Oh my gosh. I love it. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, but I love that you are activating your senses. And actually, there's a process to this. I talk about this a lot on my YouTube channel, that we have five senses, five abilities to practice interdimensional communication. So our nose and our, our uh, you know, olfactory um, uh, faculties is one of our intuitive abilities. So when you wake up lucidity, each one of your senses are going to become stronger in your dream states mm -hmm. as you train more and more. Okay, you'll be able to hear next, you'll be able to taste, and that's you waking up consciousness in these dream states. That's working. Into oh, I love that. Yeah, so that's okay. amazing that you're experiencing that. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, we're at the end and yes. far off the end, but um, tell everybody where they can find you and um, your website and all that your YouTube yeah, channel. You, so much. Um, uh, you guys can follow me on my YouTube. I have a lot of uh, free content and a lot of meditation and deep shadow work there that you can follow. Uh, right now we're doing a 30 days of integrating a death and rebirth. Um, so you can go ahead and check that out at Geraldine Orozco. It's just youtube.com forward slash Geraldine Orozco. You can also book a session with me, private session for hypnotherapy or DNA reprogramming at GeraldineOrozco.com. And if you are an experiencer and want to learn more about your experiences, you can join my free support group um, at hybridmother.com. And I have a lot of amazing courses and events that I uh, host online virtually internationally so i'll be very happy to connect with you thank you for having me ashley and for all the work that you're doing uh, it's been a pleasure thank you oh thank you so much oh well, such a pleasure and such a gift to have been connected to you and know that you've just opened my eyes to the next level you know you've just you've risen my awareness i guess i could say Thank you so much. None of this is new. It's all in us. Like we already know it. You know, we're, we're just, just remembering. Exactly. <laughs> we're just remembering. I love that. Oh, I've learned so much. Thank you so much. We'll have to do it again one day. Thank you. Yes, I'd love to. Bye. Okay. Bye.